want to uh, look at something which is really interesting me because a lot of people often talk to me about uh, family friendly TV and how it's portrayed. And I was going through some old files earlier this week and I came across some footage, which I will show you shortly. And it was of TV mogul and uh, and uh, record industry as well, Simon Cowell. Simon Cowell, of course, has been extremely influential in the media for the last 20 years, at least. Uh, boss of the internationally successful Britain's Got Talent, America's Got Talent, Poland's Got Talent, Franchise, et cetera, et cetera, as well as The X Factor. And I'll be honest, I've had a problem with Simon Cowell for a very long time. So I thought I'd look at some of the questionable things that he supported and promoted throughout the years, a sort of timeline of the dark side of Simon Cowell, if you will. So first of all, interestingly, and I think not many people necessarily know this, but uh, Simon Cowell got his break in the entertainment industry as a runner working with Stanley Kubrick on The Shining. It was at uh, Elstree Studios and Simon's job was actually to clean Jack Nicholson's axe between takes, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, he was arrested as a child. Uh, he put a toy gun, him and some friends, put a toy gun to a bus driver's head when he was 12, made the driver drive 20 miles um, uh, where the police were waiting for him. They said it was only a joke, it's only a joke, but I don't know, what kind of 12 year old does something like that? Kind of bizarre, I feel. He got his break in the music industry, which came by his father, who was a mu music industry executive. So, yeah, nepotism. His persona, of course, his public persona on like The X Factor and Britain's Got, got Talent has been very much sort of, you know, Mr. Nasty. He's the one who speaks the truth. But he's been absolutely crushing to many people that he has encountered. He's, as I say, he started off in the music industry, he was actually in the mailroom at EMI Records. Um, and, uh, you know, many of the artists that he has since signed on his own records, on his own record label, have turned against him. That's not uncommon in the music industry, where artists later down the line say they feel that they've been controlled or ripped off. Um, he's been behind such acts as One Direction, Little Mix, Leona Lewis, Westlife, et cetera, et cetera. Very interesting and, frankly, dodgy associates throughout his life. He's uh, a number of convicted paedophiles and, and sex offenders were formerly very close with Mr. Cowell. Not least, Max Clifford, the celebrity PR, now dead, who was convicted of eight counts of indecent assault. Clifford handled Cowell's dealings with the media for at least 12 years. And uh, Simon Cowell even stuck by Clifford, even after he was arrested. Um, but it wasn't until he was convicted that Simon Cowell then, you know, stopped working with him completely. Um, so really odd stuff. Clifford, we also know, hid the truth about other famous paedophiles. A thoroughly reprehensible and disgusting individual. Then there was Jonathan King, a DJ, very famous DJ, uh, during the, I think, 80s and 90s. And I don't know if you know this, but uh, it, when he was arrested um, of accusations of sex abuse um, to young boys, Simon Cowell gave him £50,000. And uh, I just want to read some details here. He, so basically, uh, Jonathan King had £150,000 bail when he was first arrested. Cowell put up 50000 of that. According to King, when Cowell heard he'd been arrested, Cowell was the first person to offer help. Um, and King later called Cowell to see if he'd put up part of the bail money. And Simon Cowell said that you didn't even need to ask. And frankly, that money kept King out of prison during the lead up to his old Bailey trial in 2001, when he was jailed for seven years for offences against boys aged 14 and 15 in the 1980s. Cowell later said, I certainly regret what I did, but at the time I had no idea what he'd done. And it was before he was found guilty. OK, fair enough. But uh, still, that still follows you. That's Max Clifford and Jonathan King. And over, you know, a decade of uh, knowing these people. But, uh, you know, you can't. Some people are friends with 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 paedophiles and don't necessarily know it. So but it, I just think that's interesting. Then, of course, there are some of the donations which are frankly reprehensible. 